So example 12. So this factors down to positive 3 and negative 1. Okay. So what are you going to say for holes on Monday? Again, this is the exact same format. So first question, do you have a hole in this function? No. How do you know we don't have one? Nothing cancels out. So you're going to say none. Okay, roots. Where do you look at for your x-intercepts? Where are you going to look? Numerator. How many x-intercepts will you have? Two. Go ahead, set both of those equal to zero. And you're writing that as an ordered pair. So I'm going to set the x plus 3 equal to 0. And the x minus 1 equal to 0. So we have two x-intercepts. Let's go ahead and plot them both. Negative 3, positive 1. Or put that both of those. Those are the only x-intercepts. Okay, vertical asymptotes. I like to do my asymptotes in a different color. I do have color pencils over there. You're always welcome to use those if you don't have any. Um, and you can use them on the day of the test. But my vertical asymptote is going to come from where? Where am I looking for my vertical asymptote? Your denominator. How many vertical asymptotes will this graph have? One. So I'm going to do mine in red. So take the x plus 1. Set that equal to zero and graph in a dashed line at x equals negative one. <clears throat> Oops, I put it in the wrong place. I put it at negative two, let me fix that. So is this going to be, is this top heavy, bottom heavy, or balanced? Top heavy. So what does that mean about your end behavior? Is it going to be horizontal or is it slanted? Slanted. So we have a slanted asymptote. And you need to do synthetic division. So to do your synthetic division, you take your denominator Set it equal to zero. So your vertical asymptote would be a negative one. Put that on the outside. And then the coefficients of my numerator are one, two, and negative three. Go ahead and do synthetic division to come up with your equation. If it's a slant, you're going to tell me the equation of the asymptote. So I'm going to bring down the first number, which is a 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Add, you get 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Add, you get 4. So we have these three numbers. This first number is your slope. The second number is your y-intercept. And then this third number, we're going to just cancel out. You don't use that third number. So when you write your equation for your slant, it's y equals 1x plus 1. All right, go ahead and graph that in color, some different color. So I'm going to graph mine in red. Start at positive 1 on the y-axis and then use your slope. Go up 1 to the right 1, up 1 to the right 1, and draw a slanted line. Now, because I'm on my iPad, I need, I, I can't put a ruler down. So I am going to go up three into the right three, just so I can get across the graph a little faster.
So you want to make sure your asymptote is in the right spot. That's really important for your graph. Because the asymptote is like the guardrail. If you think about if you're walking down the stairs, you need to hold on to the rail. You know, so I, this, that asymptote is the guardrail for the graph because it tells the graph, you can't go past me. Can't go across. So making sure you have those graph correctly and accurately are really important to your final graph. All right, now we need to find our y-intercept. Now the definition of y-intercept is the y value when x is zero. So what we need to do is substitute in a zero for x. So substitute in a zero. And when you do that, you can use either one of these. You can use this one that's not factored or you can use the one that is factored. You get the same answer. So go ahead and substitute in a zero. All right, go ahead, type that in. So what did you get for your y-intercept? Anybody else get negative three? All right, so we're gonna write that as an order pair. So that would be zero, negative three. Go ahead and plot that point. Okay, and from here, it's really up to you what other point you want to substitute in. Are there any other numbers you need to put in to figure out what this graph looks like? So if you're on the test and you draw something that looks like this, like that is not what the graph is gonna do. So if you're not sure, put in more points. So what other numbers do you wanna substitute in? At this point, it's up to you. So Natalie could pick three different numbers and Rodney could only pick one. I mean, it's literally, you're, you're taking the wheel. So what numbers would you like for me to substitute in at this point? All right, so let's substitute in negative two. I think that's a good number. Let's go ahead, find f of negative two. So let's, and make sure when you're putting in the negative two that you put it in parentheses. So you have to put parentheses around the negative. So this is how you wanna type that in, just like that. So go ahead, type that in your calculator. That's a good number to use. All right, what did you all get? Three, anybody else get three? Okay, so let's go ahead and put a point at negative two, positive three. All right, are there any other numbers that you would need to do? Or do you feel like you have enough? Raise your hand if you feel like you have enough. All right, keeping in mind that you can't go past the asymptote, that it kind of is enough. So on the left side, you're gonna make your graph is right above the slant. It's coming in right above the slant. It's gonna hit those two points. And then it's going to go straight up to the left of the vertical asymptote. All 
Because remember, your asymptotes are, are walls. You can't go through the wall. It's really close to the wall, but it doesn't go through it. And on the right side, you start off really, really close, and then you hit your two points, and then you're right underneath the slant. As long as I can see that you're not crossing the slant, we're good. Now, if your graph, like I said, if you're drawing something that looks like, like this, like that's not okay. That's not what the graph is gonna do. So you have to show me that you understand how this graph is going to behave. So it should look like this. All right, the last question that we did not get a chance to cover, I believe is, the, is number 16, it's the very last one. So let's go ahead and work through that one. There is a typo. Can you all change that plus two? Make that a minus two, because plus two doesn't factor. It needs to be a negative two. So your first step is going to be to factor. So example 16, go ahead and start factoring down. Factor down your denominator. That should always be your first step, is to factor. <laughs> So you have to make a box for this one because this one doesn't factor down because A is two. So you can't do a shortcut. So we're gonna make our box. The A term goes top left, the C term goes bottom right. We need two numbers that multiply to be A times C, which is negative four, and it adds to negative three. What would be your two numbers? Negative four and what else? Okay, so let's put those in these two squares. Go ahead, take out your GCF. So we have a 2x and a plus 1, a positive x and a minus 2. So this factors down to 2x plus 1 and x minus 2. Okay, so how many vertical asymptotes do we have? How many factors do we have in our denominator? Two. So we're going to set both of those equal to zero. And my first one would be negative one half. 
and the second one is positive two. So let's go ahead and write that in. I have two vertical asymptotes. So we don't have to graph this one, we just need to state the key characteristics. Okay, is this graph top heavy, bottom heavy, or balanced? Bottom, so will this have a slant? No, when do you have a slant? Only when it's what? Top heavy. If you have a higher power in the numerator, it has a slant. This does not have a slant, so for slant asymptote, you're just gonna say none. We don't have one. We don't have a slant because this is not top heavy. Bottom heavy always has the same horizontal asymptote. And where is your horizontal asymptote when it's bottom heavy? Zero. zero. So we're gonna write y equals zero. And that's all bottom heavy. I'm going to write that. That's for all bottom heavy. Okay, I can't really fit it, but you all know what I'm trying to say there. All bottom heavy, they all have the same horizontal asymptote. Okay, x-intercepts always come from the numerator. What factor do we have in the numerator? x plus 2. Let's set that equal to 0. When you solve that, you get negative two. So I'm going to write that as a ordered pair, negative two, zero. Now for your y-intercept, you substitute a zero in the function for x. You can use this one. You can put your zero in this one or you can put zero in this one. I like using this one. Because if I use this one, I don't even need to type it in. I know I'm just dividing these two numbers. But if you don't see that, this is, let's just put it in. So you have 0 plus 2 divided by 2 times 0 squared minus 3 times 0 minus 2. Go ahead and type that in to get your y-intercept. This is the y-intercept. You're going to write that as an ordered pair. Did you all get negative one? Okay. So now let's talk about your study guide. Can everybody take out their study guides real quick? So the test is pushed to Monday. Um, if you want to retake the quiz from before break, you need to do your corrections. I recommend you do that now. Set a date for your retake because everything on the quiz is on the test. Okay. For some reason, I don't know why, numbers eight and nine did not print a graphing grid. You need to graph eight and nine, and I can make copies of some graph paper if you all need that. But number eight and nine on the study guide, I don't know why, but there isn't a graph there. You need to graph it though. So I will make copies of that. And remember, if you need to, and because numbers eight and nine are both on the test. There are two graphs on the test, numbers eight and nine. You will be required to graph numbers eight and nine on the test, okay? So I would use this time, because you all have a full hour, I would use at least half of this time to get prepared for the test. Your test is Monday. We're in quarter two. We do not have, we can't, we can't take L's anymore because we're in October. It'll be November before we know it and then it's over. Okay, use this time wisely while you have a teacher who can answer your questions. Does anyone have a question right now? All right, I'm going to print out some graphing paper.